Yo, people, what's up? I'm playing chess against Volpole. I hope my sound works. I didn't even test it this time. I hate these bishop c4 systems. Um, so, all right, develop the pieces. Do I go e6? I'm, I'm going to go e6. Sometimes I just don't, don't go e6, but in this case, it looks nice and solid to me. Um, usually, I like to go h5 in these spots. I'm going to do it. It's a little more annoying here, though, when my knight is unable to go to g4. Like, when my knight's in f6, I like it a lot better. Now I'm not as sure. All right, let's develop stupid pieces. Uh, is he, if he castles queens, okay, I'm like not too upset about this. Let's just go for the attack. Uh, again, I'm sacrificing a pawn here because we're castled on opposite sides of the board, and so in such cases, uh, time is of the essence. I don't want to take even one move to prepare this move. I want to immediately attack. If he takes that pawn, I get open lines. And, you know, we'll see what happens. Do I have enough compensation? Who knows? I'm going to continue pushing on the queen side without any delay. Now, this move strikes me as, like, risky-ish. Because, I, I don't know, I have, like, a lot of ideas. But I don't, I don't know which one. Like, I almost want to go b3 to open line some more. Let's think. Queen a5, bishop to b3. Looks like it will be played. Mm -hmm. I'm going to play the wussy line. I, I was thinking about b3 just to open lines again. But now I'm going to... My plan is just to pile up on a4. I'm going to go bishop to d7 and then... Somehow, you know, maybe knight c8 to b6. I feel like it's a little annoying. He should go for some quick attack with g4, maybe. Like immediate g4. Uh, don't delay. This move I'm going to ignore. Uh, I think knight c8. Well, now I can move my knight. Whoa. I can go knight e5 or something. This looks good for me. Because I couldn't move it before because his bishop on g5 was attacking my knight on e7. But now I'm attacking that a pawn. I, I don't know what he's going to do about it. F4 runs into knight g4. The knight on e5 stops him from attacking me with a move like g4. So it just looks like he's in trouble here. Uh, d4 makes sense. Just get some counterplay in the center. Uh, then I, I don't know what to do. Either knight g4 or c4 or... I mean, knight g4 looks annoying. I could also just take his pawn. And then, and then take on a4. But the d4 has to be played, I think. He has to do something here. Or else he's just going to get run over. So d4. What is the best move? Bishop takes a4. Doesn't really work, does it? I'm just calculating stuff. d4, knight g4 looks very strange to me, like he could sacrifice something there. If d4 pawn takes, queen takes, bishop a4, I have a feeling it's okay for me. Should I go with my feeling? Always, always go with your feeling. Just, it's a blitz game, just go with the gut. Uh, if f4, I just have a good feeling. Oh, I can also go knight on e to c6, sorry, knight on 7 to e c6 kicking his queen out of the pin, and then my knight will be free to move on e5. But I, I just don't, I, you know, I think his, his king's a little too open here. Maybe maybe he should go king b1. That's what he does. I'm probably just going to play it safe with, with some kind of capture, and maybe she... I'm just going to do this, whatever. And I think knight c6. If he takes on d6, rook, d8, rook to d8 should be winning. Uh, and now I'm up a pawn, his king's a little weaker than mine, I'm up on time, everything's kind of ugly for him. What will he do? I don't know. What should my plan be? Queen b6, a5, a4, open up the king side some more. Hmm. Knight to g4 is tempting.
That's tempting. I'm just gonna play like this, like total wuss mode. Just a5, a4 idea. Defend the d pawn. If he goes rook c1, maybe queen to b7. Alright, what does he want to do? I'm actually not sure. Let's just go for the attack. The thing is, it helps that he can never play g4, because my knight on e5. I don't see, like, like I don't see an attack still. So I'm just, I don't see a plan for him here. Queen g3, maybe? And king h7. Queen g3 only threatens knight takes h5 anyway. That's not even that strong. I can just move the king to h8. Alright, so he really wants to go knight h5 because he realizes if he doesn't do something, he's just going to get smashed. I should probably go rook h8. Let me think though. Knight g4 is also playable. I'm just going to go rook h8. Total wuss mode. Um, I just got to make sure not to get checkmated. And then I should be doing well. The thing is, if he takes an h5 and goes like queen g5 check, I can always go knight to g6. I have to always watch out for knight takes e6 tricks, but they don't really exist. There's no way you can like trick me with this knight fork. Oh, uh, I'm gonna take it. Something like queen a5 next move. He's just gonna get a checkmated ish. <laughs> checkmated. Um, I I don't know how he's gonna survive this. Oh, okay, let's think. I mean, I can probably just take this. I don't, I don't see a big problem. I, I can do a lot of good things here. I, I don't see a problem with this move. What do you do, rook d1? This guy doesn't give up easy. Alright. <sighs> Maybe rook c8. No, I don't want to allow knight h5, even though it doesn't it doesn't do anything. <laughs> it doesn't it really does nothing. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna play this. And then queen a4. Sometimes the forcing moves are good. It's funny, when I was younger I, I would always look at the forcing moves first. Now I kind of uh Almost don't. You know, I don't know. You know why? Because it's interesting. Because if you you know that they're an option, so like sometimes if your brain immediately looks at the forcing moves, you fail to consider other options. So I think I train myself to look at other moves before forcing moves, and then if I don't find anything good there, then I just come back to the forcing moves and and make sh you know see if they're winning immediately. But it's interesting. I actually don't start my analysis by looking at them because I think I just realize that now. That's interesting, because it's definitely most people do start by looking at the most forcing moves. But it, again, it can bias you against other other options, I think. Because this is an obvious move, you know, but instead of looking at rook a1 first, I looked at rook c8, I look at b3, I look at like weird moves. In blitz, maybe that's not the best idea, maybe you should be looking at the forcing moves. But I knew I was so up in time and so winning that I had some luxury to to mess around a little bit. Anyway, thanks for watching, folks. I will see you next video. Uh, I, I don't know what else there is to say about this one, except I thought, you know, it's instructive how, you know, when they, when your castle on opposite sides, just go, 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 go. Uh, if he takes, I get open lines. Whether it's good for me or not, hard to say. I think it's okay. Stockfish thinks I'm slightly better, so who am I to argue? And I just kept going. And now was the interesting moment where B3 was possible. This is like, you know, compu the computer still thinks I'm slightly better. I, I wasn't sure what to do here. But I, I kind of thought, like, this simple plan with bishop to B D7 would give me some some advantage and at slightly less risk. Uh, my plan was just knight C8 to B6 and just gang up on the pawn. But this move was, yeah, not good because now my knight came to a beautiful square and I'm attacking A4. And it stops him from ever going g4. I mean, I kind of thought, oh, whoops, pressed the wrong button. 
I kind of thought like he should he should play g4 somewhere like, like maybe now. Or, I, yeah, I mean b4 is like a problem. I don't know. Position is probably not very good. Is the is the problem here? His position. Anyway, thanks for watching. For real this time. Bye bye.